I don't need to socialize today. I really don't. We're just gonna like go feral. It's a winter wonderland. <sighs> Imbecile. Like, I'm going to throw up. Can you calm down? <laughs> Cut, y'all. What's up, it's Jan, back at it again with another Nerdy Bookish video. This is gonna be my January cramming vlog. Hello, it's time once again. It's the first cramming vlog of 2024 and I'm stressed. It's the 24th and we've got books to read, my dudes. I guess we'll just talk about the stuff I have to read, like for book clubs and other stuff, and then the books I like maybe possibly want to get to. <laughs> First of all, I gotta finish. Okay, I gotta take my little... Ugh. I can't really. I'm gonna take the little magnet out. If you know, you know. This is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. This comes out January 30th. Do we like this lighting? Let me change it to white lighting because this is not going well. Or do we like the bluish? I feel like I'm at a hospital. Sure, we'll go with that. I have to finish this by this weekend, hopefully before then. It's a 400 page book though, 390 or whatever. But this comes out on the 30th. I have to film a reel for Penguin to promote this book. So this has to be done for sure. It's a witchy YA. This is the author of House of Hollow. If you didn't know and I gave House of Hollow five stars so I'm super excited for this. I've had the e-arc for so long. Soft DNF the e-arc because it was just like a super early copy that like had too many errors in terms of like I've talked about this before but there are like random spaces in words and I just could not. So I was waiting for my physical arc. I got the physical arc and then now I have another finished copy to promote in the real. So I've had this book lingering on my radar for months so I'm finally getting to it. I'm on page 58 and it's pretty good. I mean I wasn't expecting what's happening really, but I'm glad it is. I also have to read The Quiet Tenant. Clements Michaelon is the American way to say it, but there's a little accent. So I'm assuming they're French. Assuming makes an ass out of you and me. So I can't just say that. I don't know, but this is Katie Coulson's Patreon book club pick and I'm gonna be a guest host for the live show. It's a thriller from the perspective of the serial killer's victims. And one of my patrons really loved this, but I've been hearing a lot of three stars as well. But all I know is the chapters are short, so I'm intrigued by this. And then and I have to finish Love Boat Forever by Abigail Hang Wen because it's a library book and I've renewed it enough times already and I'm only on page 86 and it's due on the 30th. Those are the three, I guess, priorities, but I'm also gonna have audiobooks going. I'm gonna have random things like shorter books going. And speaking of shorter books, I have Green Fuse Burning by Tiffany Morris. This is by an indigenous author. Destiny, one of my patrons, read this and gave it five stars. So I was like, I'm gonna grab it from the library because it's only like 90 something pages, I think. No idea what it's about but it looks like weird horror so we shall see and then we have lights which is a graphic novel it's the third and last installment in the sheet series i gave sheets a three and then i love delicates it was a surprising five star for me and people are saying that lights is even better and it makes people cry so i'm like i want to cry so i grabbed it like immediately definitely gonna finish this and then i also definitely want to finish Feybound because i am 148 pages in i literally bought this a couple days early because i found it at my barns and it was a whole thing it was a moment and then I started it as soon as I got home and I'm still not done with it but I'm loving it. this is gonna be five stars like absolutely and then I'm gonna be motivated to finally pick up the final strife because it's the same author but this is a fey fantasy book by a black author like you don't see too many of those so I'm glad this exists RIP to my bank account when I finally cave and buy a pretty edition of it because there are so many out there right now so yeah that's the like tentative TBR I guess but y'all know there's gonna be more or less. This is so dumb, but I'm currently listening to Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Listen, for the buzzword, because I just need to be free of the shackles of January's buzzword-a-thon word, okay? Which is the three forms of there. There, there, and there. And I tried They're Going to Love You by I don't even know, but I DNF'd that audiobook. Wasn't into it. It was like a lit fic ballet, and I can't. I can't. And then I tried There, There by Tommy Orange, which I know people love, but I'm just not in the mood for like a serious book right now. I think I'm just in a fantasy mood that's the issue and I want to give it a fair shot because I know it's an important book by an indigenous author and like the 10 10 or less than that that I read was really good so far but like I know I'm not gonna be fully in it so I'm gonna put that down for now so then I was like I need I need a quick fix <laughs> to just get this buzzword out of the way so are you there God it's me Margaret was adapted last year into a movie I don't think I'm gonna watch the movie but this book is also on my little scratch-off poster for like a hundred must-reads in your 
lifetime. So if nothing else, I'm reading it to scratch that off. It was a three hour audiobook. I literally started it like an hour before I had to leave for work. And now I have like eight minutes left of the audiobook. So I'm gonna finish that, check that off my little goals of the month and move on with my life. That's the intro, long as fuck, I'm sorry. If you don't know what a cramming vlog is, welcome. It's when I start a vlog like a week or so, give or take some before the month ends and then just try to read as much as humanly possible, accomplish some reading goals of the month, like a last minute type of, you know, a cramming vlog. It's fucking self-explanatory, Jan. Stop treating them like they're five years old and incompetent. I'm still deciding whether I should go to the gym or not. And if I do, it'll probably just be a cardio day, but it's like 6, 17 p.m. I still gotta edit my winter ween vlog very late as usual. That's pretty much my night. Hope you enjoy this vlog and I'll talk to you later, bye. If you hear a demon screaming in the background, it's our neighbor's baby. I just finished. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. I'm giving it. I'm. I'm giving it. <laughs> I'm giving it three stars. You know, it's not that bad. Some people are like, this isn't aging well, like blah, 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 blah. It's really not that bad. If you put yourself in the mindset of a girl who's learning about periods and bras. Oh, that's what I was looking for, my fun fact. I was like, what the fuck am I doing on my phone? Okay, Joey's gonna wash something, so I'll just, I'll be back. All right, we have a bra fun fact. Wait, hold on, let me finish talking about the book. Yes, I put myself in the mindset of 12 year old Jan learning about periods and bras and all the stuff. Margaret was actually ahead of her time because she was like in the process of like choosing her religion. And if I learned that when I was like 12, I'd be a whole different person <laughs> in many ways. But anyway, it was quick, it was okay. The narrator could have been better for the audiobook, but alas, it's fine. When was that published? That's an old, old book. Like look at this cover that's on Goodreads, it's awful. And I've decided I'm not watching watching the movie, that's for sure. Old school, whenever this was published. 1970, damn, damn, damn. So it was pretty entertaining actually, cause they played like spin the bottle and like two minutes in the closet and did the whole like, I must, I must, I must, must increase my must. It makes me wonder if, if this is what made that, not like a thing, I'm sure that phrase, that thing well, that came before. That was popular back in like the 70s and 80s. Yeah, and it was published in 1970. Yeah. So I wonder if it was like a form of media that like made it, like mm. I wonder how my mom mom found that out. She's the one who like brought that up to me, I think. One of my friends told me about it actually and I was like- That's where you should look up. Oh, where it came from? That should be a fun fact. But my fun fact's cool too. We can do a twofer. Okay, one for each boob in the bra. <laughs> <laughs> so my first bra fun fact answers the question, why did bras used to be pointy? During World War II, bullet or torpedo bras were invented to protect the women in working factories. I thought that was fascinating. Did you look it up? Yeah. What does it say? It's from- It's from this book? It's from that book. Oh shit, that's crazy. No way. That's where it comes from. Wow, Judy Bloom is a freaking goddess. Damn, what a legend. Honestly, I'm glad I read this book. The universe spoke to me and was hey, like- Judy Bloom. Yeah, Judy Bloom. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Who am I? I think I know the story. Judy B. Jones. <laughs> Junie B. Jones is superior to Margaret, not gonna lie. <laughs> but did she come up with that phrase? I don't think so. Anyway, my winter ween vlog is uploading. Joey watched some creepy videos <coughs> on YouTube. Every vlog. You know how many times? Y'all don't know how many times I have to edit out Joey's fucking cops in the background. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. Oh. And I'm only saying that, obviously he can't help it, but I'm only saying this because he can't, he won't go to a fucking doctor. When I die. And get an inhale. When I die, you're gonna miss my cough. He has this new thing now. Whenever I complain, about anything he's like when I die because when he complains about my hair falling out and random places and he finds it like in uh, an ice cube in my pants <laughs> then he's like you know it's fine because when you die I'm gonna ask for your hair to come back everywhere <laughs> so now he like fires it back to me anyway it's reading time I'm gonna be reading the invocations what are you reading chasing the boogeyman for no the you're not you're reading becoming the boogeyman. becoming the boogeyman for the fifth month straight <laughs> you're almost done I know I I am, I got 
got like 110 pages left, I think. Wow. All I'm right. almost there. Let's do it. And it's only taking me so long because I'm lazy. It's not because the book is not good. I am absolutely enjoying it. It has been five stars pretty much the entire time. It's and his problem, not the book. Yeah, it's, just, it's a me thing. At least he's aware. We love a self-aware <laughs> mans. <laughs> Mr. Chismar. Okay, let's do it. Do, do it. it. Do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. Welcome to day two of this chaotic cramming vlog. Currently at the drive-thru to get my medication, my old lady meds, if you will. I just drove past my stepdad. <laughs> it's so weird seeing people from your family or like your partner or something randomly in the streets, on the literal <laughs> streets. I just drove past this car. How I recognize cars is not by the type of car, it's by the color of the car and license plates. I pretty much know the first three, if not the whole thing, characters of all the important people in my life's license plate. That grammar was all so bad, but whatever. Anyway, before I have to be at the drive through window. I started the Austere Academy by Lemony Snicket this morning, and that's what I've been listening to on my drives today. It's a three hour audiobook. The last sprints that I had with the lair, we were talking about the series of unfortunate events, and then it just made me want to actually finally finish them as an adult, because I know for a fact I read the first four, and I think I might have read this one as well. If not, I definitely saw the episode in the show. This is the one where there's a turban involved, and I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a turban involved involved and it's a little bit problematic. I understand that it's like a very backlisted book and at the time maybe it would have just been able to be brushed past obviously because there are fucking seven more books but nowadays might be a two star. They're short audiobooks. I'll have them as like kind of filler books. I told this story on a live show maybe I can tell it again real quick but when I was younger like second or third grade one of my friends Brian John <laughs> we don't talk anymore but at the time he had the entire series in paperback and he was like I don't want these anymore. You read right? Do you want these? And I was like, yep. And it was a core memory of my childhood and I took them all for free. I was in so much shock and I remember I had a random manga in my shelves and I was like, I'm gonna give this to him because he likes comics. I was so dumb. And I just gave that to him and my mom was like, do you have a crush on him? I just vividly remember this whole thing. But yeah, I have no idea where those went. My mom probably sent them to the Philippines and to like family over there or we just got rid of them or I lost them during a move. I don't know, but I used to own all of them and now I don't. So audiobooks are what we're doing for the most part. Probably all of them, yeah. I have no energy to read them physically. The invocations, I'm almost 200 pages in, I think. That's another almost accomplishment. Hopefully gonna finish that tomorrow so I can move on to the quiet tenant and maybe lights so I can have like a little eyeball cleanser. Sure, we'll go with that. Okay, gotta go, bye. I also wanna- Janception. Whoa, vlog in the vlog. Good morning. You know how I know it really is a full moon? Cause my ass went to the fucking gym this morning. And then Christina got up early to edit and we were like, why is it backwards day? So I'm freaking tired. I didn't vlog last night cause we were at my mom's. Sorry, I still gotta go back and get my laundry, but I don't know what I'm doing today. I gotta go to the post office. Maybe I'll get my nails done, who knows? But I have sprints with Rachel at six, but I don't know if I wanna be perceived tonight, so we'll see. But I got a gift from Liz, WTF It's Liz on Instagram. So thank you so much. She said, happy 7K to my favorite booktuber. You deserve it and more. Thank you so much for all you share with us. It's really been helping me get through the winter. I think I'm gonna do some Junji Ito rereads soon. Because it's time! I didn't read this morning, I didn't edit this morning, and I'm pissed about it. Okay, bye. I lied. I did read. I listened to the Austere Academy. I'm gonna give it one star because there's a turban used in it. I think I said this yesterday, but at the time, it probably wasn't problematic, but it surely was nowadays. It just gave me the ick because there was also a part where the person in said turban was like, if you know the storyline, this person, I don't want to use the word, but I'm gonna use the word, disguises themselves as things, okay? So then it reiterated multiple times that this person's not wearing it for a religious 
religious purposes, whatever, whatever, right? But that was like towards the end. So I don't know if that makes it better or worse. But then there was also a part where the person was like, it's okay, I'm used to being religiously persecuted. I was like, no way. No way did Lemony Snicket just do that. I understand that this was like whenever this was published, right? But also that doesn't excuse anything. I mean, this is a white man. One star, whatever. I'm still gonna give it the benefit of the doubt just a little bit and continue the series, but that doesn't mean my ratings are gonna get better, so we shall see. But it's interesting to read such backlisted books and see how dated they are, right? Do I have a fun fact? No, but I don't know. The Austere Academy, what the fuck happened? What could I use? Oh, staples were a big thing. First staples store opened on May 1st, 1986 in Brighton, Massachusetts. That's not what I wanted. I wanted like actual staples, mm -hmm. like not the store, my dude. Oh my god, I just need coffee injected into my veins. Ooh, okay, I got it. I'm on an article called 25 Useless Facts About Staplers. Technically, there was not a stapler in the book, but there were staples, so we're gonna give it some grace, okay? It says, before the name stapler, the device was called Hotchkiss, after the American company that had created it. There's that. That is my fun fact. Today is Friday, so we shall see how the weekend goes. This is my cute sweater of the day. Day. Isn't this so cute? I love it. It's like my second time wearing it. It's got ghosties and bats and moons. Oh my. But the goal today is to finish the invocations. I have like 190 pages left. That's doable, she said hopefully. But I just want to move on. And I think I do want to get my nails done and my eyebrows done. I'll probably feel better. I hate canceling on people though. Rachel, I'm so sorry if you're watching this. I do want to discuss theory though. So I'll decide, but okay. I'll talk to y'all later. For realsies. Hi, we would like to take a moment. Thank, thank the Academy. Huh? Think what academy? What? You know that's what they say when they accept a word at like. Oh my God! You said I like to think. Emma. Emma. Viewers like you. Just <laughs> viewers like you for sending me saving Noah. She woke me up at about 7:30 this morning. Yep. And just threw a package on me. And yep. Scared the piss out of me. Turned on the light. Turned on the light. Brightest blinded me. I, I felt, was like, I want to see what you got. I felt like I was being raided by the military. <laughs> So I got saving Noah. Thank you. The only person I know who read that was Sarah. And I don't remember well, if she liked it or hated it. her apparently. I love how it's, dear Joey, exclamation point. <laughs> Why are you yelling? <laughs> Look, I got my claws done for her. Valentine's Day. Can you see? Here, you tap the screen and I'll hold my claws up. Tap it right at the... Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you did your job so well. Thanks. He understood the assignment. I did. Look at them. They're so pretty. I was going to throw in white in there, but I was like, no, nah, let's do pink and red, because what else am I going to do pink and red? Oh, I also got this thing. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So if I you know, just hold it like this. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's kind of too big for what it's trying to do. But like it works, right? Hey, wow. Joe's eyes. How oh, weird. Joe's eyes. But like it works, right? But then it pokes. Yeah. It's a little pokey. I'll be using this for library books. <sighs> And then if you have like a bigger thumb like Joey, you'll get poked by these fangs, but it looks cool. So if you want it, maybe I'm just using it wrong. I don't know. I gotta finish the invocations tonight. So I stop thinking about it. And then Katie needs to answer her texts because I need to find out if we're still reading The Quiet Tenant or not because she's not in the mood for it either. I need to see what book I'm gonna tackle instead after the invocations. I started another audiobook today. I don't know who I am because this is my third middle grade audiobook in a row. Like what? It's a month of middle grades, I guess, but I started Dark Waters by Catherine Arden, which is the third book in the, is it the Small Spaces series? This one takes place in like murky waters. There's like a monster in there. The next one's a clown one, and I, th I think I might read that next month because it's called Empty Smiles, and smile is a happy word for Buzzwordathon gotta always be using the noggin. So I'm like, I think 30% into that. I could paint by number tonight. I don't know, the possibilities are endless. Did you buy energy drinks? I did. For both of us? Ghost was two for four. Mm. So I got me a Swedish fish and I got a red- Sour patch. Sour patch drink. if you want it. I do want it. That's why I got it. I know I said I didn't want any, but- you Well, did. I saw it was two for right four. Choice. I was like, I don't know why I'm still it. recording. I don't know either. No but I got my eyebrows done too. Mm. My nail guy was like, I saw your mom at the airport on New Year's Day. And I was like, that's so <laughs> funny. I also got gas and went to the post office. So I did, okay. a, I did a lot of things. And I was still home by like 6, 10. That's wild. Also, mm. I have two parcels that I have to pick up. So many packages today. So many. So many gifts.
<laughs> God, I was watching a vlog from three years ago and I was so cringy. How did you guys watch me? All of you who watched me before, props to you for sticking around. If you're not here anymore, I don't blame you because <laughs> me three years ago, I didn't think I could be more annoying than I am right now, but I certainly was. Like, why was my voice so high three years ago? I was a full ass adult. Why was my voice like seven octaves? Was that your hip? I just ripped my toe off. I just cracked my toe. That's disgusting. I really hope you could hear that. <laughs> Honestly, upon using it, it works perfectly fine. It's like the gravity counters the pressure of it, so you're really not pressing too hard on it. I take everything that I said back. Look who came back from doing legs. Look, he's got a new book again. I bought him Run Red. That's our next Unmuted and Unhinged. I don't oh my know. god, this font. Tiniest balls, but short chapters. I don't know when this video is going I have tiny out, balls. But anyway, I have two books that I bought in a state of depression. I bought The Art of Scandal by Regina Black. I've heard nobody talk about this, but it's been compared to Seven Days in June. It's blurbed by the author of Seven Days of seven days in june i think she catches her husband sending nudes to someone else and then she has an affair with this younger dude and it's just like drama oh and then the younger dude happens to be like this famous politician's son oh it just sounds so fun so we'll see how that goes but also i have penance by eliza clark this i had from the library for literal months so then I finally just returned it and I was like, I want this on my shelf. That's why I haven't read it because I don't want to return it. So I just bought it. This is the author of Boy Parts. I've been wanting to read this since it came out, but it was out in the UK before us. So <gasps> that is such a pretty blue. I'm also waiting on When the Moon Hatched by Sarah some shit. Shout out to Sash for telling me about that book because I bought it because I know I'm not gonna wanna read it on my Kindle because it's 700 something pages, but it's about dragon. And I saw out of context quotes. I just hope it's my new Fear the Flames. Not to replace it, but just to like hold me over until the sequel to Fear the Flames. You know what I mean? But anyway, There's I started- There's a sequel to that? Mm -hmm. I started editing my Lair Readathon vlog for this month because we're trying to be better about the turnaround time for these videos, you know? I have an hour of footage. It took me like half the time that Joey was gone to fucking figure out where I ended the last vlog and started this vlog. And it was because I didn't start the clip with my face. I started it with Joey's face. So that's why I was like, where the fuck does it start? That was annoying, but I found it. I was like, did I forget to do an outro and an intro? I'm just gonna get this under an hour. So I'm gonna finish editing this 40 seconds clip that should bring it under an hour just to like feel better about myself and then I'm gonna continue reading while Joey makes dinner he's making burgers hamburgers where's that from name that movie I actually did it pretty badly I'm burger oh my god what is that I'm burger oh pink panther yeah good job <laughs> right, when he quizzes me like that I never get it right hello so we watched two episodes of This Is Us, and that's why I look like this, and half my eyeliner is gone. It is now 9.53. I'm finally laying down to finish this, so I can continue a different book tomorrow. I just want to get this out of the way. This is what happens when Jan sticks to one book at a time. Like, yes, I have like 14 current reads, but like one physical book is just not cutting it for me, and this is what puts me in a slump. Like, y'all don't understand. All of you who ask me how I read so many books at once, like, this is why I can't do anything else. I have an energy drink now. We got this. Less than 120 pages left. It's fine, it'll be fine. And this is working now. Oh wait, I already said that. It actually works better with the left hand. There we go. Okay, let's do it. realized I don't think I ever really said what this book is about right but all you need to know is that there are witches there are demons there are people tethered to demons there's necromancy blood magic a sapphic relationship budding female friendships some spunk in these characters okay there's body horror if any of those are buzzwords for you this is the book that you're gonna like and if you liked house of hollow you'll probably like this too the only thing i have right now is it's a little bit too long there are some parts that i'm just like glossing over because it's just extra information there is a quote that i really love but it's one of those that gets repeated so many times to the point where it's annoying but the quote is 
I did not come this far to only come this far. I love that and I'm gonna use that on a regular basis from now on, but it's literally like, especially now in this part that I'm at in the 200s, it's in like every other chapter. It's getting to that point where it's redundant and I feel like a lot of YA does that and that's really annoying. Nevertheless, I think it'll still be four stars just because like there's a lot going on there are a lot of moving parts there's a murder mystery also i don't know if i mentioned that there's a lot more to the story than just like a cozy witchy time which is what i was expecting it's a solid ya horror in my opinion i have 104 pages left so i didn't really read too much but i was talking to the creator of this and she said you could also lay it flat if your hand gets tired and i'm like wow that's so much easier and i won't be poking my book she's super sweet i love this thing now i just have to get used to using it i'm scared i'm gonna lose steam real fast with this book tonight i think either way whether or not katie wants to read the quiet tenant and have the discussion i think i'm still gonna start it tomorrow and if if I go to Silent Book Club, which I don't think I talked about, but I've been to two meetings for Silent Book Club and I missed December's and the next one is tomorrow. I may or may not go, we'll see. It's from one to three. And then I have my Carmilla top tier Patreon gathering video chat hangout thing at six. I also have to pick up my laundry for my moms. We're thinking of going to the DMV to like change our addresses on our license. I don't know if we want to do that. The DMV is just such a drag, but it's about time we fucking do that. Knowing us, we'll probably put it off for another like month. I'm obsessed with my nails. I've never done pink and red before because obviously it's not like me, but now I'm feeling like it's me. I just got to a big reveal. I'm more shook about the word situation versus who was involved. And like, that's how you know I'm like a big word gal. It's like when I tell people I can't visualize things and like when I listen to audiobooks, all I visualize are the words that I'm hearing, not what's actually happening. Also, sorry if it sounds like I'm like by a fucking wave pool because Joey's showering and I don't know. I don't ask questions anymore. 300 pages in now, chapter 28, I can see the light. I also forgot to mention, at the nail salon, I always bring my Kindle, right? I just happen to have my Kindle in my bag. I wasn't planning to actually get my nails done like I was still debating on it so it was just pure luck that I still had my Kindle in my bag but anyway I continued reading The Marionettes by Katie something it's on my 12 Rex by 12 vamps project I'm 50 pages in now so I read like 20 something pages I'm really not feeling it it's really short so like I kind of want to push through because it does have witches and vampires and it has a cool concept that you're like partnered with a vampire to go through these trials and like trials aren't like my favorite thing in the world in books but if it's done well, I can get behind it. But the marionettes, it might just not be for me. Like the writing style, there's something about it that I'm not jiving with. It's not flowing for me for some reason. Maybe I just need to binge enough pages at a time. But like it's reading quickly, so I mean it's under 300 pages. Still debating on whether I want to DNF it or not, but I DNF'd so many from my 12 Rex by 12 friends last year that I want to try to minimize that as much as possible this year since I am really being intentional about it getting a head start not a head start because i started in january but i already checked off two in just the first month i think it is the writing style i know a lot of people who were impressed by this book so we'll see about that one but the invocations just got really good again we'll see where it goes but it's probably gonna be a four star there's been like 40 pages where i didn't annotate a single thing so there's like a little bit of a lull joey's about to come read with me after he showers and he's reading saving noah it's 12 42 and he forced me to stay up and finish this book. I told her she's not allowed to sleep. I fell asleep so many times though. There were so many scenes that dragged like at the end. There were some gory parts that were written decently. It just felt like the longest scene of my life. It just went on and on and on and on and this girl was still not doing what she was supposed to do. The demons were there till the very end so that's pretty cool. There was a little twist but I was way too tired to even give a shit about who the killer was and who was behind certain things or motives and whatever. But it was a good story. I'm gonna give it four stars. I think part of me wants to give it a three just because for a bunch of reasons that I'm too lazy to list right now and to like 
articulate but I think four stars is solid because if I put myself in the shoes of someone who still reads a lot of YA then it's a four which is fine sometimes when I go into YA nowadays I'm just like extra skeptical for no reason other than the fact that like I don't read as much anymore of it but truly I think it's a four it's a good book I don't know if I need three copies of it but it's a good book nevertheless characters were cool I could have done without the romance honestly it wasn't even that prominent it was just like there to be there which I hate when books do but whatever there were maybe one too many brothers that I had to keep track of maybe it is a three and we're gonna keep it a four a low four so it was a fun time it just took a little bit to get into and then there was a little bit of a lull around here but then the ending was cool and like it was action-packed at the end I would have cared a lot more if I weren't so fucking tired so we're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and keep it out of four so now I can confidently make my fucking reel that I need to make we'll probably like put some effort into it you know because I'm getting paid for this shit so we're gonna go to a forest or something okay and I'm gonna wear my witch hat and read the finished copy not read it but like you know hold it in the reel it's gonna be a good time hopefully I have a vision I need a fun fact I'm gonna do a fun fact about a defibrillator this is like bare minimum effort, okay, because I really just want to go to sleep. But the battery life of a defibrillator, <laughs> if the machine is not used, can be up to five years. Jeez. Wow, I'm glad someone's impressed. Wow, that was kind of cool. That was fun. Sweet. About 1,700 lives are saved in the U.S. per year by bystanders using an AED. There's two for you. A twofer, if you will. Yay, another book off my TBR. <laughs> my list of hopefuls in my journal. Wow, 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 wow. All right, good night. Tomorrow I'm going to maybe pick up lights or green fuse burning if I want like quicker reads, but I think the main novel could start The Quiet Tenant just to give it a feel. Give it a feel? Ew, why did I say that? Give it a give me a feel. Give it a shot. Can you not? Yeah, so that's the plan for tomorrow. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna pass out. Bye. Um, Good night. Joey read like 74 pages of Saving Noah. I did. Look at him I'm going. nude. Good morning. So it's like nine o'clock. Joey just left. Go to his parents for the day. I have the day to myself. Think I made the decision to not go to Silent Book Club so I can just stay home, save money. I have coffee here. I have my books here. I don't need to socialize today. I really don't. I want to get a lot done. I want to film my February releases video. I need to get my Lair Readathon video up for Patreon. Finish Lights. It's a graphic novel, so that should be quick. I want to finish this hundred page novella. I got the audio for love boat forever so i could paint by number and listen to this i also can listen to this while i work on my february bullet journal i want to go to the gym at some point but that'll probably be later on in the day the biggest thing is my bullet journal really but i also have to get my laundry for my mom's and then i can get some free food over there too you know gotta be strategic around here and that's when i'll probably pick up lights because you know it's always distracting over there i have to try to read some more bipoc authors because i'm trying to do 50 50 every month I'm slacking. I think I'm like three behind. So those are the big things. I think that's it. I'm gonna make some coffee eventually, but I'm also just gonna fill out my bullet journal real quick. I think the theme I'm gonna do is horror movies, but with like pink blood drips and pink do I have pink tissue paper? I probably do. I love like spooky things with pink. I don't know, I think it's just so cute. I'm still debating on whether I should do a journal video. I might since I have my nails done, but then I have to like clear out this table. I'm excited for a productive Saturday. I'm gonna read a little bit first because I did start my day a lot later than I wanted to. I do just wanna get the graphic novel out of the way, so maybe I'll start with that. I'll let y'all know when I have an update. It's currently the 27th, so we have like four days left of the month. So we'll see how many books I can get done this weekend. <sighs>
there's a Bisset bookshop and there's no way that's coincidence because the second one, Delicates, Ariel Bisset blurbed it on the back. So that's kind of cool to be honest. Okay, first of all, it's a fucking sign that I should start The Quiet Tenant because I just got the audiobook, so that's cool. And the other thing is I finished Lights. It's literally almost exactly like two minutes from being exactly an hour after I started and I finished it. I, I finished it. Why is my voice like this? I'm going to give it four stars. It was going to be a three for a little bit because I got sick of just trying to figure out Wendell's story and how he died. Like I wasn't really a fan of the back and forth, like with the memories and stuff. I honestly didn't really care. I wanted to be in present time all the time, but then the ending tugged at my heartstrings, the metaphor for all the lights and how all the different types of lights apply to like people in your life. I thought that was pretty clever. So I think it deserves like a four. There were friendship situation, you know, the typical friendship drama. There was a lot of like ballet talk. <laughs> I think my fun fact for this one is going to be about the Nutcracker. If I can't find a good one, then it's going to be about lions because Wendell's hat that he always wore when he was a kid was a lion ear hat and he apparently loved lions so we're gonna look for a fun fact about the nutcracker ballet so hold on all right so since i don't think i'm ever gonna have this as the fun fact again i'll tell y'all a couple because one's like more simple than the other and that is that the original titles for the nutcracker were the christmas tree and the fir tree there's that and then also the twinkling sound that you hear during the dance of the sugar plum fairy song is actually a newly invented musical instrument called the celesta it's like a piano hybrid there it is. That's a Celesta. Tchaikovsky found the piano hybrid with a bell-like tone while in Paris and smuggled it to Russia to create the character's unique music accompaniment, which has been described as sounding like sprays of a fountain. That's cool. Whoop! Caught y'all. I knew that was a precarious situation. My goodness. Gonna hold y'all because I'm scared now. I think now I'm gonna get ready so I can film whenever I feel like it. Well, now that I have the audiobook for The Quiet Tenant, I'll probably start that later tonight, but I want to finish at least one of my audiobooks first so I can return one because I have an overwhelming amount in Libby right now. It's 10 o'clock. Let's see what my mom's up to so I can get a gauge on when I should go over there, but I definitely want to film first because if I leave the apartment, I'm never gonna film. I think my next task is getting ready and filming and I should probably edit a little bit too. But okay, I'm gonna do all the things that I do after finishing a book and I'll update y'all later. Okay, so I just spent like an hour wasting my time, but also not really because I have a right to be upset. Never lend your books to people, okay? This is your sign to not learn the lesson the hard way because I sure did and I'm pissed about it. There's that. I'm gonna go get ready now for real. Okay, just finished filming. As you can tell, the transformation is real. I'm getting hungry, but my mom's not even home and I would love to just have lunch over there, but she's not home yet and I don't know if my stepdad's home. I think I want to start Green Fuse Burning because it's by an indigenous author and I know I can finish it today. Maybe I'll bring my laptop to my mom's and Green Fuse Burning since I finished lights already. I don't know when I'm going to start my bullet journal. That's going to take hours. I don't think I'm going to do a video anymore. I'll probably just post photos on Patreon. I think that'd be good because I have to get my Lair Readathon vlog up. This is what happens. Like I have so much I want to do in such a short amount of time that it's like overwhelming and then I get nothing done. And I know that's like a common problem, but it's always on days where like I have the time, you know? I also want to paint. I haven't painted in a few days. All right, dishes are done. A to-do list is getting checked. It's getting checked. My mom said to come over at two because that's when she'll be home. So I just ate some chips and read some of Green Fuse Burning to like hold myself over because I'm starving, but it's fine. Sit in Joey's chair. I'm 18 pages in and so far nothing's really happening. It's just kind of obviously introducing us to the characters and like how her relationship with her mom is. I don't know. It seems like that type of main character where no one hears her out. Everyone just makes assumptions. I think she talked about a time where she was like feeling some sort of way and either her mom or someone in her family, the way I already forgot, lol, but it was like, oh, it was just a dream. Like it happens. It's common or whatever. I don't know where the story is gonna go i didn't really read the synopsis i just know it's a novella and i'm hoping it hits because i love short books that pack a punch and i really hope that's what i get from this i mean one of my patrons 
Destiny read this and loved it. It was her first five star of the year. So I think I mentioned that in the beginning of this video. But I mean, I don't know anything about it. I didn't ask her, so we'll see. Oh wait, yes I did. She said it was like very, what was the word she used? Was it introspective? I don't even know. Existential something? I can't remember what she described it as. It's okay so far. It reads really easily. See how it goes and I love this fucking cover. gonna take a nap and of course she's on TikTok and bothering me I should have stayed home in my peaceful quiet apartment okay Notice my makeup is smudged. It's because Joey and I just finally finished watching This Is Us. Okay? That show is something else in good and bad way. I freaking love that show. I've been trying to finish that show for fucking years. Next, I'm gonna show Joey a million little things on Hulu and I'm just gonna start it over because I love that show so fucking much. That's our next endeavor. We haven't watched a nature documentary in a while, so maybe we'll do that first as a palate cleanser, you know? But it's currently 10.48, neither one of us is sleepy. So he's watching a World War II documentary while I finished Green Fuse Burning, finally. I had three pages left after our sprint, my sprint with the Carmillas. My heart of hearts wants to give it a two Two, but I think I'm gonna give it a low three because the writing was really fucking good, especially at the end. I'm sure there's a message there somewhere that I'm just missing. Like, it talks a lot about death at the end and like dreams and whatever, but I missed the little speculative twist that it was supposed to have. Oh wait, was that a different book? That was a different book. But this was supposed to feel a little bit eerie. I think this is horror, right? I'm gonna say my fun fact. And it's gonna be about paint because our main character is an artist. So we talked a lot about art. It actually described a bunch of her paintings as well. Her reasonings behind them and materials she used, I think, and things like that. But anyway, fun fact about paint. Paint was created in the Middle Ages out of egg yolks and ground semi-precious stones. Egg yolks. That's pretty cool. I think I'm just too stupid for books written by indigenous authors. They just have so many like metaphors, at least the ones that I've read. They always have so many metaphors and like just abstract ideas that my brain cells cannot follow. And it's not bad by any means. It honestly, it's good writing 99% of the time. This one has gorgeous writing. There were a couple good quotes that really resonated with me. And there's also a sapphic romance, by the way. But I just could not grasp. I can't, I couldn't get grounded. Like there was nothing I was invested in. I didn't feel attached to any of the characters. I didn't really feel anything. And that's so depressing because like I said, the writing is very lyrical and atmospheric and descriptive and yet so we're, we're gonna give it a low three and the cover i love this cover so much it's a shame that it wasn't for me but a three is still decent and it took me way longer than it needed to i just found myself zoning out a lot i'm so sad because i was anticipating this i was waiting for weeks to get my hold from the library i think i'm finally gonna paint i didn't get to do my bullet journal today so that's definitely the biggest goal tomorrow since i got a lot of other things done today in terms of my next physical read probably gonna be Feybound. I just really want to finish this already. Did I tell y'all already? I paid $63 for the Fairy Loot edition that I found on Pango. I had Pango bucks. $72.50 was the lowest price I've seen for the Fairy Loot one. And I was like, if I don't snatch this now and someone else does and I never see a price that low again, I will be really mad. So I was just like, risked it for the biscuit and got it. So I'm waiting for that, but I do want to finish it before I even receive that one. That's gonna be my next physical read. So Katie officially canceled the Quiet Tenant live show. So I am gonna work on Love Boat Forever. So that's another BIPOC author, audiobook wise. Can't believe I talked for that long. Okay, I'll talk to you maybe tomorrow, possibly, probably. Oh wait, I totally forgot I was still listening to Dark Waters by Katherine Arden. Gonna finish that because I have like two hours left of that audiobook. 
Hi, I know I said I'd update tomorrow, and I know I look significantly worse than the last clip, but I just finished another book via audio while I was painting, and I made pretty good progress when I paid my number. We have a CPCP boy next to us right now, but I am wide the fuck awake. <laughs> anyway, I finished Dark Waters by Katherine Arden. I am giving it three stars. It's all right. Not as good as the first one still. I'm hoping the next one is at least a four star. It was just okay. There were some like riveting action scenes with this like snake lake monster thing. It was good. It was a high three. I just didn't feel right giving it a four because I enjoyed the first one a lot more, but it was a good like coming of age storyline too and there were some like in your feels moments. <laughs> there were a lot of good discussions about finding your potential and believing in yourself and knowing what you're capable of and or not knowing and then figuring it out as you grow older. So it was really cute. My fun fact for this one is gonna be about snakes. So first of all, I didn't know some snakes had two heads, okay? Let's just get that one out of the way because there's a photo right there and that's wild. Look at a double-headed snake. That's crazy. I know. But the more crazy one was some snakes steal venom from toxic toads. How do you even do that? Snakes like to that. Stay toxic. <laughs> Let me elaborate. A species of non-poisonous Asian snake becomes poisonous due to its diet. Oh, they made it sound more intense than it was. Oh, like I'm picturing them like they're like... <laughs> I know. They like sink their fangs in and they're like... <laughs> they just eat these toads, these toxic toads. And... Yeah, they eat certain species of toxic toads. The snakes store the toxins obtained from the toads in the glands of their neck. When facing danger, the snakes release the toxins from their neck glands. That's wild. How do you just tell your body to do that? Right? Like, how do you adapt to do that? This type of defense mechanism is usually seen in animals lower on the food chain. The minority snake. Of course, we gotta work twice as hard as the regular <laughs> snakes, you know what I mean? That I'm gonna leave it. This type of defense is impregnant Rhabdophis tigrinus, this Asian snake, can even pass the toxins onto their young. Fucking cat is drunk texting me. The toxins protect the young snakes from predators and last until the snakes are able to hunt on their own. That's that. We learn something new every day. I'm so glad y'all are enjoying these fun facts because so am I. I've gotten a few comments that are like yeah, loving this. I'm learning so much. <laughs> I'm entertained and educated. Mm -hmm. It's so cute. I mean, I was gonna keep them regardless. I was kind of skeptical about whether or not anyone would give a shit, but here we are. We gotta watch a nature documentary tomorrow since we finished this with us. We gotta watch Puff and just get it out of the way. But okay, for realsies, I will update tomorrow because that is the last book I'm finishing today. Three books in one day, baby. Still not as much as I wanted to do, but still got tomorrow. And I got a lot of distractions because I was at my mom's and there were birds. Mom was snoring and yelling. And my stepdad was like hammering shit and drilling shit in the bedroom. It's oh. never peaceful in that place. <laughs> Comfortable, and no one seems to hold me like you do. Mm -hmm. You're so wonderful. A star could never shine. Hi, we're back home from our endeavors. We had brunchy brunch, and then we had coffee. This coffee shop that Joey's never been to. We went to Ace Hardware to find some Christmas lights because we're trying to make it cozy in this bitch, and they didn't have any, so we spent half an hour measuring our walls and we used me we used my body because we're americans apartment is exactly three gen lengths wide yep <clears throat> so we bought christmas lights they're gonna come when christina and juan come at the end of the week i don't think i ever said when they're coming they're coming for sure i don't know when this video is gonna be up but they're gonna be here and juan's tall as fuck so we're gonna utilize him how tall is he 5'10". Oh, I thought he was like 6'2". I thought he was 6'2". I always say he's tall as fuck, but I mean he is, oh, but... He's not, that means he's only four inches taller than me. Thank you. That's how math works. Anyway. Or... <sighs> anyway, we are doing laundry and... I do laundry, okay. I'm gonna be working on my journal and audio booking. I'm gonna listen <laughs> to Love Boat Forever. So I can return this tomorrow because it is due tomorrow. And the audiobook just came in yesterday or the other day, so... That's what's happening. Oh, I got to page 200 in Feybound. Still loving it. It takes me like a couple pages to reacclimate. Ooh, 
big words <laughs> but it's really easy to fall back into it and i'm on chapter 22 now page 209 and it's good let's hope i finish it in this vlog because i don't want to although it is a black author but and I don't i'm reading <sighs> just kidding I don't want to be part of your stupid video anyway. <laughs> we know what you're reading. You're no, reading Saving knows. Noah. Nobody knows. They don't give a shit what they think of it, so. Can you calm down? He's loving it. He read 100 pages at the coffee shop. Okay, so I'm going to work on my bullet journal. <clears throat> I'll give y'all a little bit of a sneak peek, but pictures of my journal are usually Patreon only, so there's that little perk. Okay, bye. Hi, it's like 10 p.m. Joey just cried from Saving Noah. I did. Okay, can't. Book, I never thought a book would make me cry at all. He just spoiled it for me because I have no interest in that book, but sorry you couldn't see him and all the lights like washing them out. I don't know. I'm so fucking tired. I just got off sprints, private sprints with Kat and I was like, I gotta go. I can't even like look at a screen anymore. But I finished Love Boat Forever. Oh, I forgot my fun fact. I'm gonna look up fun facts about pianos because she was a piano prodigy, but I gave it three stars and I'm really fucking sad about it because the other two were five stars. The first two books. The first one followed this girl named Ever. Second one follows Sophie. Loved both of them, loved both of their relationships, even though it was YA. All three of them had like such good discussions about being Asian in America. Also self-love, self-discovery, like all that shit, right? This one follows this girl Pearl, who is Ever's little sister. And she also goes to this thing called Love Boat, which is like a study abroad type thing in Taipei. Hold on, I'm doing too many things at once. And this one also had like a love triangle thing and the masquerade ball and like all the shit. Wasn't into it. Also wasn't into the fact that right at the beginning there was like this TikTok thing going on that accused her of being racist and she just like didn't understand. But then like eventually it made sense to her. But then someone she meets at Love Boat tells her that like she wasn't wrong for doing it necessarily. But also the people who were offended weren't wrong for being offended. Regardless, the TikTok thing, I hate social media books. I can't stand it. I do it for a fucking living. I don't want to read about it. So that was annoying. But this guy, Kai, she meets. I love him. I was rooting for him the entire time. He had this like severe injury in his hands that made things hard for him to do. So there was like some sort of disability rep, right? To some degree. There was also, like I said, discussions about being Asian in America. And then he also kind of taught Pearl a lot about like colonization. And he was like, Really, you like Beethoven and Mozart? She was like, Yeah, just because they're white doesn't mean they're not good. And then he was like, Okay, but you haven't like explored your own culture. Type thing. So there was this whole thing, and then there was like tracing back her roots and like this instrument that her great grandma had and everything. So there was like a little bit of not a mystery, more like adventure, but like journey to like discovering her roots, I guess. I don't know what I'm fucking saying anymore, but I hope that all made sense to some degree. It was three stars, it was still good. This one was definitely more YA than the other ones in my opinion. I think it's because Pearl was clearly younger and then you see Ever and Sophie being like whole ass adults in this book as well. So it just like didn't hit the same, but it's okay. I finished another series second one this year, second one this weekend. Look at me fucking go. All right, piano, fun facts. The world's tiniest grand piano is seven inches high and the world's largest piano is six meters high. Oh my God. The most expensive piano is worth $3,400,000. The first one that comes up on Google is that piano keys were originally made out of elephant tusks, which I think I knew because ivory keys, right? Elephant tusks, ivory, I think I knew that. But in case you didn't, now you do. Sorry this lighting is so bad. Every Everything about this video, just a mess. Also, what is my hair doing? I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm dreading work. I don't want it to be Monday. <sighs> We're just gonna like go feral. I'm gonna find a short audiobook. I'm thinking of listening to Riot Baby because it's really short and I know it's good. I've heard from many a people, many a people, many people. And then I have this graphic novel that I was gonna use for the buzzword that Ashlyn, one of my vamps, recommended to me called Charisma's Turn. I also wanna finish Feybound, obviously, so. I have a game plan, seven minute clip, why? Say goodnight, Joey. Hi, Joey. Hi, I'm so freaking tired today. My head's like throbbing and I'm like a little bit dizzy and a little bit nauseous, it's like weird. I am like 30 minutes early to my dentist appointment. So hopefully they let me in early. If not, I have Faye Bound with me. I also got Second Place by Rachel Cuss. I just decided to start with this for her books because she wrote this trilogy. It's like Outline, Transit, and something else. And those have gorgeous covers. And I almost bought this one online for super cheap, but 
I like this cover better anyway and it'd be aesthetically pleasing. I mean the other one's good too, but I figured I'd start with a standalone and see if I like her writing enough for me to buy the trilogy. And the only person I know who's read her before was Sid. I saw this one on Booksta last night, so I was like, I'm gonna try it. I didn't know she had other books other than the Outline trilogy. Then I also have Tokyo Ghoul Volume 8 because we are on a time crunch. It's a cramming vlog and I need four more books by BIPOC authors to even out the ratio. And I am not gonna fuck up this goal in January, okay? My goal of reading at least 50% BIPOC books every month. Yeah, I fucked up, but I still have time. It's the 29th. I'm gonna just read a manga, an audiobook. I'm gonna finish a couple current reads. We're gonna make it happen. All the anxiety from today was fine. It all played out. Tomorrow, there's a meeting that I have to like present at briefly, but it's chill. After 2 p.m. tomorrow, I'll be much more okay. And then I could fully be excited for Christina being here on Thursday. I'm gonna go to the dentist now, get a cavity filled. And then we're gonna try to finish Feybound tonight. That is the goal. I also have to film a reel for Penguin Teen. So that's gonna happen because I didn't do it yesterday. I gotta pick up my birth control. I gotta put away laundry. I gotta figure out if this other partnership product got delivered. Okay, I'm gonna go because I also, also gotta pee. But that's my update for today. Happy fucking Monday, but also not happy at all. I'm hungry. I had two hash browns. My coworker said I looked a little pale, so I should probably drink a bunch of water and eat some food, but can't do that till after this cavity's filled. So I'll talk to y'all later. Hopefully I'm not dying. Hello, my face is still numb. <laughs> you can kind of see my lopsided face and you can see where it's like swollen, but I just got home and it's like three o'clock. Don't mind my messy background. I got a couple things. So I did get the product that I'm doing a partnership for. So I have to unbox that in a separate clip and put that in my next video that's going up. But I also got Devolution by Max Brooks. This is for a secret project. And then I have a merch item. I don't know which one it is. <gasps> my Google is free t-shirt. I always forget to promote my merch, but I do have merch. It's linked down below all the time. And I also have Patreon exclusive merch if you were interested. This one says Google is free with a little skeleton hand. And I figured I'd just get it in white because the colors pop more. If you were unaware of this saying, I say it to myself sometimes. I say it to Joey. My patrons and I say it jokingly, but not jokingly to people who just ask questions that they could have easily just googled themselves you know don't be lazy just google it i know sometimes it's a quick thing and i always have to like disclaim that like okay i know google is free but just answer this question but sometimes it's just like please don't waste my time so that's the backstory on that and now i am just gonna wait a few more minutes until this wears off so i can eat without fucking up my mouth it feels so weird i haven't gotten a cavity filled in a while I'm just gonna read some of Feybound or I think I'm gonna import footage for my February releases so we can see what we're working with here. I'm obviously not gonna film that unboxing clip with a lopsided mouth, so I'll wait. I'm so glad to be home early. It was much needed, I'll tell you that much. Oh my god, I also forgot to mention, I did start listening to Riot Baby by Tochi Onyabuchi, I believe is the author's name, and it's narrated by them as well, so that's fun. I looked at the Goodreads synopsis and reviews right before I started it and I had no idea that it had like fantasy dystopian elements so I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm not a huge fan of dystopian books, but we'll see. Science fiction was also a tag on Goodreads, so I'm nervous, but so far a certain animal's head exploded. It was so unexpected that I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm hooked. I'm probably gonna listen to it right now actually and also paint so I can finish Riot Baby. What a good idea, Jan. in the corner. Hi. I'm crying because look what he got me. <laughs> they had him at work. He's like, oh my god, I forgot. And he's like <laughs> running to his bag. 
Wow. I forgot to vlog the whole thing where we went to a forest preserve, filmed some shit for my reel. I was in a witch fit and everything. And then we also went to the gym. And I've been trying to edit and I just don't have it in me. In Feybound, I'm exactly 100 pages away from finishing, but I'm also getting sleepy. So I'm gonna figure out how many pages I listen to in Lunar Love and hope it adds up to 100 pages. <laughs> So I'm done for the day, okay. I'm gonna change this battery out tomorrow. You should do it now. I should do it now, huh? I'm gonna forget tomorrow and then mm -hmm. I'm gonna be at work. Oh, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, my Valentine. Why? Hello, look at my dirty laundry. <laughs> I have packages galore, but real quick, I finished Riot Baby. I'm gonna give it three stars. It said it was supposed to be dystopian, and I understood the dystopian. Okay, I'm not gonna wave this around. I understood the dystopian towards the end, but like all throughout, it felt just like real life because it talked about like police brutality and these LA riots. But then there were also random parts about their sister having this like ability to do things that I'm not gonna spoil. Also like her aging and then there's this like chip thing. I don't know. I mean it was well written and the audiobook was well done too because it was narrated by the author. So of course it came across very well. What are these? Oh, it's our lights. So Ooh. we got our Christmas lights that Christina's boyfriend is gonna help put up. <laughs> he already agreed to it. But yes, this place is gonna look extra cozy. And then Joey's battery pack, so Ooh. he stops wasting fucking batteries. I need a fun fact. Ew, I don't wanna do rats. It's like the only thing that I remember from it though. LA riots, I don't wanna do something depressing. The LA riots from like the 90s? Yeah. Oh, this is like an actual, I thought this was a pingo order. Wait, no, this is a pingo order. This is my fae bound. Oh, the special zoo? <laughs> Sorry, this clip is all over the place. I also have sprints in like 20 minutes, so I gotta hurry. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. I'm going to throw up. Damn. Ooh, when mm -hmm. you did that, there's like gold foiling. I know, that. I see. Can you focus on the thing that matters? <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not even ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Okay, so it's signed. <laughs> oh my god, I'm kicking my little feet. Whoa. The fact that I knew what this looked like already, but like pango photos just don't do it justice. And then the reversible dust jacket. Whoa. I like the front better though. I think they're pretty. It just doesn't have gold foiling, so obviously we're gonna go with it. It doesn't make sense to have a reversible dust jacket. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but if you put it on reversed, it's gonna like. Oh, there's the spine too. They used to not put the title on the spine, so then it was like kind of annoying, but they included an art print too and the little spoiler card. Oh my God, oh my God. Wow, I have no regrets no for regrets. all the money I spent on this book. Oh, this is the back. <gasps> I have less than 100 pages left of Feybound. Perfect timing for this to come in so I can rave about it in my Instagram post tomorrow when I finish it tonight, hopefully. And then I also have a lemon crate. <laughs> Y'all, I'll tell you what I want. <laughs> Why did that sound like the beginning of that? The fact that I have too many editions of too many books. I need to like chill, but this was not my intention, okay? But here's my third copy of the invocation, but it's okay, this is the only one I actually paid for. Wow. Whoa. Well, I that dark green. Look at that. That's a fucking corpse. Wow. In the back is this creepy house. This is the only subscription box other than book of the month that I have right now. Wow. Look at that. It's so pretty. It looks like my book sleeve with Rachel. Oh, it does. And then the front says necromantea. Because there's necromancy in this book. Okay, we need a close up. Look at all of that. Joey's eating Cheetos, so that's <laughs> all that noise. Ruining the moment. Sorry. Of this pretty book. Wow. Wow, my library is just stunning. Stunning. So if you haven't seen my invocations reel that I did for Penguin, Pretty badass, not gonna lie. Thanks to Joey. Films by yours truly. Okay, this is too big for the book and that's annoying. I usually just keep them in the books. This is really small. Yeah, it is. Like, why is it so tiny? Compared to Feybound, look. That's what I was about you. He's me and Joey. <laughs> Imagine if I spilled water on both of these books. I would shit. Okay, okay. That is a seven minute clip that I don't want to edit, so we're gonna go. I'll come back with a fun fact later, maybe. If not, we're just gonna take the L because I'll probably forget, but I just can't think of one right now. I can't remember anything that happened. Everything is too depressing and I don't really wanna, you know, I don't wanna do fun facts on like riots and police and rats. Yeah, no. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> 
I'm like sweating. Feybound just got so fucking intense. But it was also right after this like most gentle who did this to you moment that I've ever read. I want to say it was the first sapphic who did this to you moment that I've ever read. I don't know when my love for who did this to you started, but it's here to stay apparently. I just hit page 300 and I need to finish this today. It's so I am gonna read Final Strife. I am going to catch up with the series and all this author's work because the third Final Strife book, I don't know what the series is called, but the third one comes out, I think in, I wanna say June, but I could be wrong. Could be later in the year. I will. I love her writing. I'm obsessed. I literally can't stop smiling and I'm just swooning and kicking my feet. The romance in this. I don't know if it's just me being extra attached to these characters for some odd reason because like I've seen reviews that were like this is some of the worst romance in fantasy that I've ever read well, like I don't get it and I'm like I don't get it because this is cute as fuck they're so cute like three minutes to talk about this book which does not do it justice because it's going on my top 10 of the year let's be fucking real it's going on my top 10 of the year i don't even care i don't even care all you who are like it's too early to tell i can tell five fucking stars all around i can't believe it took me as long as it did but i'm glad i finished it in january fucking Feybound. oh i extra have no regrets of spending 63 dollars on that fairy loot because First of all, the perfect length of a fantasy, okay? I was just telling Joey, you don't see many fantasies, good fantasies, that are under 400 pages. And this was 372 and it was perfect. Everything wrapped up nicely. People were getting betrayed left and right. The action scenes were spread out. The pacing was fantastic. All the different characters I was able to keep up with. There were all these twists and they weren't all packed in the last like 15 pages. Like they were spread out throughout like the second half. There were parts that hit the feels. There were steamy scenes, cute little romantic <laughs> parts. I just understood everything. What a fucking concept. Like it's so validating when I finish a fantasy book and I'm like, wow, I get it. Sorry. It's okay. <coughs> Joey's choking on a uh, poppy seed. <laughs> from my bagel that he's oh so kindly making. I loved it. I actually ran out of some tabs and I had to improvise. And then I realized that I had a tab for cute slash romantic, so I replaced some tabs. It was a whole thing, but it looks so pretty with the red. I'm just obsessed. I will never stop raving about this book this year. I'm making everybody read this book. <laughs> Uh oh, 810. I'm gonna definitely read this author's other books. Honestly, hopefully this year. It's the Ending Fire trilogy. Brie, Brie Cherie last night made it known. Let me know. Informed me that it's called the Ending Fire trilogy. So that is happening this year. I'm gonna hopefully read The Final Strife next month for Black History Month. That would be grand because I want to experience more of her writing. And the animal companions, Pila, I fucking love her. And then there's this guy, Golan, who dressed them all up and like did their makeup for like certain ceremonies and stuff. The only thing about it is that I couldn't visualize the world. This is all I had in my head, this cover. I'm like, okay, so they're walking through sand and shit. Like I couldn't picture the world, but like what's new with me, right? But I didn't care, I didn't care. I could visualize the Obea, the animal companions, the characters, not really, but it's okay. The important thing is, we have our health no I'm just kidding the important thing is I knew like who was who their relationships relative to like each other if that makes sense I don't know I think that was redundant I'll be thinking about this one for a while and speaking of the obeya they are like leopard like creatures so I am going to say a fun fact about leopards in terms of riot baby we're not doing a fun fact about it it was it's too serious of a book I can't do it leopards can run up to 36 miles an hour leap 20 feet in a single bound and jump 10 feet straight up 10 feet Feet. That's high shit, dude. That's an insane vertical. So does that mean it's like they can reach 10 feet with like their heads or like they are 10 feet, like their feet are 10 feet off the ground? I think it's, I think it includes their heads. Because if their feet were reaching 10 feet, that means they would probably be like 12 feet 
12 feet. Oh, I don't know how fucking tall a leopard is. A leopard is not two feet long. I'm talking about from leg, from the bottom leg to their head. Yeah, that's not two feet. I don't know how long. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> Leopards are huge. Just... No, but isn't a vertical like when you're like how far the ground is from your feet, not how high your head is from the ground? No, because when, when like basketball players and shit do like their verticals, yeah. they, they jump and they fucking touch like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing. So it's eight. Yeah, I know. I've done that for volleyball and mine was eight foot. You jump eight feet? Yeah, I can touch the tip. Oh, so yeah, it is the tip of your finger, right? Because so like, it was like a swingy thing, the swingy. Yeah. Yeah. flag thing that yeah. like spins around when you hit it. So essentially, you're a leopard. I'm a leopard. <laughs> yeah, I I hit it. My vertical is really good when I play volleyball. So yeah, I could do like eight feet. Fucking slap that shit. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. If anybody knows how to do I think it is the, the tip of your fingers. I think I'm underestimating how tall 10 feet is. So, I mean, obviously a leopard is not reaching with their fingertips. So it's probably like the top of their heads. Anyway, that's not the point of this clip, but there you go, learning some things. Good morning. One more sleep till Christina is in my vicinity, but I'm gonna be ending this vlog tonight. I have to read two more BIPOC authored books today. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna finish Lunar Love via audio and I'm gonna finish Tokyo Ghoul, the manga. I could do it. If anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be me. God, it looks so messy back there. Don't look at anything. Focus on me. <laughs> Unlike what my camera keeps doing. I just got home. I really have to pee. Joey is putting laundry away. I gotta put my laundry away. We gotta clean this place up for Christina. <laughs> I have an unboxing because are we surprised? Ooh, yes, okay. Look, it's like wrapped in two rubber bands. That's stupid. I thought it was a box set. So I tried out this sketchy website called USA for Books because I wanted to replace my my Ember in the Ashes cover because I have the crappy old old one and Katie is reading and Cassandra Lynn they have a book club called Wyverns and Words been in their discord forever I've just never actually participated and this year they're doing like series read-alongs as opposed to like a book a month and their first series read-along is an Ember in the Ashes I'm already late because I didn't want to read my ugly copy give me a break I'm just a girl and I really like these ones so I found them for super cheap like cheaper than Amazon cheap though so there was the first one and then oh, this one's a little bit damaged by the rubber band but a torch against the night i just love how there are like animals in i'm assuming embers coming out of like torches and swords and shit there's a sky beyond the storm and a reaper at the gates i love these compared to the other ones even the ones with the people on them i think this is a used copy because like what is that crease but honestly i don't give a shit there's no writing or anything in it oh this is actually the finale yeah i don't know how the order goes I think it's, yeah, that's how it goes. And these are so much prettier. I can't wait to read these because not only have I heard really good things about them, but it's a BIPOC author. I will be tackling this series this year, hopefully. I also got a little bit into Tokyo Ghoul Volume 8. So I'm gonna finish this tonight. I'm gonna use this as a bookmark. And then Lunar Love, I have like an hour left, less than an hour actually. So while I put laundry away, I'm gonna be doing that. And if I need more time, I will paint. I think it's gonna be like a a low three maybe even a high two depending how it ends most likely a low three because there are discussions about being not asian enough or not american enough and the guys are really cute about everything it's the main female character who is the most just de-fucking-lusional imbecile like she is insufferable in terms of like i understand the point of the book is to be ridiculous because she is ridiculous in terms of just fully believing that compatibility is all there is compatibility in like chinese zodiac signs is all there is to find love and she's just so tunnel vision hyper focused on that concept that she just like accepts nothing else she's just so annoying about it no matter what anybody tells her like her grandma her sister her best friend the guy she doesn't believe anything unless your zodiac signs are perfectly compatible it could be ridiculous in like a fun way but in this case it's just annoying Annoying. And the guy is really sweet about everything and she's just like not listening to him It was funny. There was a part where I literally almost said out loud I was like, oh my god, you're not listening to him The audiobook as I was driving was like I hear him But the words are, aren't convincing me to change my mind or something like that and I was like So you're aware that you're just simply dismissing everything he's saying because you're stubborn. You're a stubborn bitch 
She's obviously into him. They've already kissed at this point. He's so into her and he keeps telling her now he's in the middle of his grand gesture. I just appreciate that it's like kind of a unique concept, you know, with the Chinese Zodiac coming into play. And then it's like a rival matchmaking service where the guy has an app where it's based on an algorithm. And then hers is old fashioned, like handpicked based on your Zodiac sign type shit. They have this wager is what they call it. So basically like a bet. And then it's to get like more publicity because because she needed to save the business like all this shit, okay? She just won't listen to anybody. But there's also this like heart-wrenching moment that just happened right before I got home. I'm just so sad because I've been anticipating this book ever since my friend randomly gave it to me, my friend from high school. I met up with a girl from high school because she didn't want this book anymore. She was like, I'm not gonna read it again. I'll just give it to you. Ever since then, I kept putting it off for some reason. But now Christina got me Red String Theory, which is the same author. And I'm like, okay, it's time to get Lunar Love out of the way, especially because it's also my friend Sharni from Sharni and Books book club pick for February and I was like okay let me get ahead so I can actually join the live show it's not going well my dudes it's not the audiobook isn't bad it's quick to listen to it's easy to listen to I think I was able to listen to it at like 2.5 2.7 speed while I was driving at work I had to slow it down but I've been listening to the shit all day so I'm ready for it to be over I, I can do this I'm almost done with both books I'm so happy about these books I'm gonna go pee now and talk to you later, bye. This is an angle. It's a choice for sure. Putting away laundry took a lot longer than I expected, but I did finish Lunar Love. I am giving it a low three for the reasons I already said. It talks about being biracial, but also, especially towards the end, it talked a lot about like tradition, Chinese culture, tradition in terms of certain ceremonies when it comes to funerals and ancestors, and I think even birthdays were mentioned. Obviously appreciated all that, so that's where the extra star came from. But minus all that, take it all away if it were just purely for the romance. Romance was two stars. I didn't really feel any sort of chemistry between these two. The guy was trying everything to get this girl. Not trying in terms of like pining. He was just like very expressive about his emotions and how he felt towards her. And she just had her blinders on for not being compatible with him because their zodiac signs weren't compatible. Seriously. I mean, I probably could have saved myself many a time if I went by that criteria. If that's a real thing, then... But if that's a real thing, then Joey and I shouldn't be together. Is that the case? Uh, the I think so. Asking. Well, this is Chinese zodiac sign, so it's kind of different. Yeah, we gotta look up your... I'm, I'm curious, because I'm year of the ox, I think. Oh, I'm a... Uh... Oh, you know? I think either I'm a monkey. I'm a monkey. Either that or a pig, which would have been funny. My mom's a pig. Or my dog. Wait, your mom's. A it's by birth year. It's oh, not by year. month. That's right. I'm either a dog, a pig, or a monkey. Okay. We'll look it up and then I'll let y'all know later. I did like the quotes. Well, okay, quote meaning like the first page. Literally, I only highlighted the entire first page and now I'm gonna sell this on Pango. So yeah, the entire first page is pretty much highlighted. It just talks about how love is like the moon and the analogy was so clever, I think. And there were a lot of cheesy parts. There's also like no steam. There's like one kiss. If you want low half a chili pepper type of steam, <laughs> go for this. No chili peppers, to be honest. That being said, my fun fact for this is gonna be about the moon. And Joey, oh so kindly, Googled for me. I just hit my fucking throat. So, about the moon, because you know a lunar love. <laughs> Get it? Moon dust apparently smells like gunpowder. I didn't know that. And that probably completely useless information for anybody who's never smelled gunpowder. Who's never smelled gunpowder nor the moon. Nor the moon. So go sniff the moon. Sniff the moon and let me know. <laughs> let me know what you think. And then sniff gunpowder. But see if it's similar. Don't sniff the gun. Okay. We're gonna go eat dinner now. <laughs> On that note, I will update y'all once I finish Tokyo Ghoul Volume 8 and then we'll end the vlog and successfully end January with 32 fucking bucks!
Hello, my makeup is all cried off because we watched a couple episodes of A Million Little Things because we love to torture ourselves and we went from one sad show to another. But I finally finished Tokyo Ghoul volume eight. Joey's fixing the vacuum because I can never vlog with nothing going on. I'm not gonna do a fun fact because, ooh, I don't even wanna do a fun fact as I was saying because I'm just exhausted. I'm so fucking tired. I haven't even done dishes yet. I haven't showered yet. I just wanted to finish this book and I gave it two stars. Why was everyone fighting yet there was zero resolution? There was an action scene like every two pages and I was like, this is giving me nothing. Nothing is happening to progress the story. No one's even dying in these fights. So I don't understand. And then there was a whole like anatomy lesson randomly. Like why did we do the bone dance from Hannah Montana for like what? five pages? I was so confused. It was literally like scientific ass words, like anatomical words. I don't know why I'm continuing the series. I am like kind of curious to see how it goes. Felt like a filler volume, but it was like one of the highest rated of the series, like on average on Goodreads. So I don't know. All I know is I read 32 books this month, 16 white authors, 16 BIPOC authors because I fucked up but I redeemed myself. I was intentional but not intentional enough and that's why I had to beat the clock these last four books. Successful reading month though in terms of quantity. Quality there were a couple there was like a handful of five stars four and five stars. There were more than a handful of four stars. I don't have my phone so I don't know what the fuck I read in this vlog. We're just gonna count it up as I edit and then I'll put it right here. This is the total number of books that I read in this vlog. It'll probably be in the title too. You made it to the end of this video Ooh, let's put a leopard emoji in the comments down below to represent the Obeya in Feybound. Thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all had a glorious January reading. I don't know when this video is gonna go up, so stay tuned, I guess. Jante's Inferno is probably in full swing as this is going up. Or over. Who knows? I don't. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a vampy day. Don't forget to do some self-care. And I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye!